You are listening to Seniors Junction Podcast. Your hosts today, Namrata Vigaria and myself, Paul Merkley, co-founders of Seniors Junction, our very special guest today, and it is our great honor. The Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister for Seniors and Accessibility in Ontario, MPPDZY. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Really appreciate for having me in the program. Thank you. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about, well, could you tell us who you are and what you do a bit? Uh, as an MPP, I represent the riding of Richmond Hill and currently serving as the parliamentary assistant to the Minister for Seniors and Accessibility. As the parliamentary assistant, I work with Minister Cho and advocate for our seniors and people with disabilities to ensure that the necessary support systems are in place so that they will live independently, they will be active and socially connected. This is what we want our seniors to be. And Ontario is a very diverse um, province. This is part of what makes us such a wonderful province to live in. Our diversity includes having many Ontarians with disabilities, and also many of them are seniors. In fact, Ontario is home to more than 1 million people with disabilities. Also, Ontario, Ontario's seniors are the fastest growing sector. And can you imagine? We have over 100,000 seniors uh, every year. So people will be turning into seniors every year. 100,000, can you imagine? When our progressive conservative government was elected in 2018, we already see this is happening. That's why we established a ministry that is solely dedicated to addressing the needs of seniors and people with disabilities. Through many initiatives, we are helping, we are helping seniors to stay safe, make Ontario more accessible for everyone, as well as promoting the benefits of age diverse, accessible workplaces and communities where everybody can participate. Under Premier's Ford leadership, we are making life more affordable, all Ontarians and ensuring them that the government are providing them the service that they need so that they will be protected and the health and well-being are being taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's such a wonderful introduction and giving us what, uh, what the government is up to. And my question is that in your work, you must have encountered the issue of social isolation in seniors. And from your perspective, what are the pain points that you've observed? Yes, uh, social isolation is a very important concern that we have. And thank you very much for this important questions. We did develop a lot of different programs to address this. Allow me to uh, highlight what are the uh, concerns that we have and how do we give solutions to each one? What are the things that we introduce? Yes, uh, seniors are the fastest growing segment in our population and has been one of the one that at risk group during COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm sure we all have heard how this affect people mentally. And for the seniors is even more uh, uh, impacted by this. They are suffering from the mental health issues which will lead them into depression and loneliness, which is very sad. Our government is addressing the social isolation by implementing and strengthening supports which target helping seniors stay connected in our communities. We're actively supporting their mental and physical well being through these programs. Our seniors are an incredible source of wisdom and energy in our communities, helping them to stay connected, actually is a great benefit to all of us. And we know our seniors have unique needs that evolve in changing as an adult age when they are changing this in our communities. Now, this is why we tailor many programs to provide the local supports, meeting the seniors in different way in the language of their choosing. 
that one we see is the most important. I'm sure you heard of 211. Uh, this Ontario 211 service, we have over 150 languages. Ontario is home to a diverse population who speaks many languages and providing information about the government programs. We find this is so necessary for them to know what is going on and stay connected. Now, this is particularly important in a province that has so many immigrants. And as we know that adults, uh, as they turn in, it into senior, they need uh, the need of speaking in their own language. The first language is so easy, so important to express, especially when they express what they need uh, physically, the physical health, if they can speak in their own language, it makes the biggest, biggest difference. By offering the information in so many languages, we can help break down the barriers of isolation that can cause by the languages, and we can also help them to express what they need. We're actively funding local community organizations through our Seniors Community Grant Program. One of the great things that our government has been doing is we're partnering with local community organizations who know the, the, the people in their community well, and this is very effective. We have been doing this for a couple of years now. We find it is so well received. Well, last year, we have provided grants to 188 community organizations across the province. By mixing both in-person and virtual programming, they can help to ensure that the seniors all across the province receive the critical social connections and activities that they deserve. This year, we have expanded the programs again to give more options to the older adults. Our government is committed to empowering our seniors to be able to age in their own homes. And this is something that they would prefer. This is something that they want. As long as they wish, we will do our best to provide it to them. Well, this requires building our local, social, and physical infrastructure that helps to meet this unique needs. This needs can change from community to community. This is why we introduced this inclusive community grant program. Working with local community partners as we see that has been very successful. We are helping local organizations to build up the support needed for our seniors. When we enable our local communities to meet the unique needs of the local seniors, we can best ensure that the local needs are met. We've talked a little bit about the social supports through the Seniors Community Grant Program. Our government is also supporting over 300 seniors active living center all across the province. We have been having this senior centers and they prove to be also very important for the community. They have been doing a lot of work, especially during the pandemic time, providing them with the remote control programming for shifting and give them the different programs when they can even just watch it at home. And we have seen that a lot of seniors are happier when they can reach out to the communities with the different programs that they introduce. Even they can do dancing, they can do exercising, cooking classes and all that uh, through the remote control program. While this introduced new challenges, it also provided an opportunity to help connect seniors who have mobility issues. As we have been able to shift back to more in-person activities again now, we are seeing that many centers will be doing the in-person as well as the remote control programs so that we can continue to keep our community engaged. They can choose to do remote or in-person. 
One of the programs we introduce in direct response to COVID in Ontario is the Ontario Community Support Program. As you see, we have so many different programs, not only result from COVID-19, but as we know how our senior, the needs are, we have been pr producing different kinds of programs. I hope I'm too, not providing you too many information now, but I want to give them as many information as I can so that they know what the support is given to them from the government. While this Ontario Community Support Program provides deliver the food, medicine, and other essentials to seniors, this is most important, especially for those self-isolated and they do not want to get out of the home just so that they can stay safe during the pandemic. To date, we have provided over one and a quarter million of deliveries. So this is good to hear, which means that they really rely on these deliveries to help them during this difficult time. I have to say this is an incredible accomplishment. It has a significant positive impact to help our seniors to stay home, stay safe, and bring them the need, the, the things that they need and help them and connect them socially as well. The supports we offer to our senior will continue to evolve. We will continue to study what are their needs and we'll continue to give it to them, just as the needs of our seniors uh, show what is required and we will uh, evolve and give them the need to provide them the needs that they, um, that they, they ask for. We will be listening to them to get a feedback from our seniors and from the families that have been supporting them, we'll do our best and we will give and ensuring that our seniors, that they will have the dignity and the needs to live safe and comfortable wherever they are in their own home, in their own communities. And I thank you for allowing me to say all these different kinds of programs. I know it's, it seems a lot, but I just want them to know that we are here to really support our seniors. Thank you. I think we are so grateful that we had the chance to interact with you. And thank yeah. you so much for elaborating all the programs. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.